This PowerPoint video shows geologic features associated with the San Andreas Fault near Fraser Park, California. This video was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 1801 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org. Buena Vista Museum is a 501c3 nonprofit institution. Information on this video is presented for enjoyment of the public. Permission has been obtained to use copyrighted graphics and photos, and all graphics and photos are attributed to the appropriate source. This map shows a false color satellite image of Central and Southern California. The San Andreas Fault, outlined in red, is a prominent feature. The fault, a 700 mile long break in the Earth's crust, extends tens of miles below the Earth's surface. The town of Fraser Park, 70 miles northwest of Los Angeles, lies along the trace of the San Andreas Fault. Here, the fault is not a knife edge feature, but rather a quarter mile wide zone of broken crust. Before showing features of the fault zone, let's look at the big geologic picture. The San Andreas Fault is the surface expression of the boundary between two huge plates of the Earth's crust, the Pacific and North American plates. It has been that boundary for at least 16 million years. These plates move different directions at different speeds above more fluid portions of the Earth's crust and mantle. Currently, the Pacific plate, shaded blue, moves one and a half inches a year northwest relative to the North American plate, shaded pink. Continual stresses result from these differing plate motions. Stresses are occasionally released as strain during earthquakes, but the stresses also result in the landforms you see, east-west oriented mountains and valleys in California's transverse ranges. The last major earthquake to occur on the San Andreas Fault in the Fraser Park area happened in 1857, but many other nearby faults are capable of major rupture. When most faults rupture, crust on one side of the fault moves up or down relative to the other side. That is shown with the normal fault and reverse fault block diagrams on top. However, the San Andreas Fault is a strike-slip fault. Along a strike-slip fault, broken crust moves laterally as seen in the lowest graphic. Major earthquakes, the type that cause the Earth's surface to rupture, occur about every 150 to 200 years on the San Andreas Fault. But differing earthquake frequencies divide the San Andreas Fault into four color-coded segments, the Northern, Central Creeping, Big Bend, and Southern segments. Fraser Park lies along the Big Bend segment. The Big Bend segment is so named because of a lazy 40-degree S-shaped turn in the fault trace. Having such a turn causes unusual stresses and landforms adjacent to the fault. This geologic map shows major rock types and faults at the Earth's surface in the transverse ranges. Fraser Park is the crossroads where major faults such as the Big Pine and Garlock intersect with the San Andreas. A variety of rock types are present. Pink represents igneous and metamorphic rocks, while green and yellow shades are younger sedimentary rocks and alluvium. Major faults are marked with wide black lines. Ongoing stress from two directions is elevating land along the Big Bend segment, similar to what happens when you squeeze a toothpaste tube. Now that you have a bit of San Andreas Fault background, let's look at photos of geologic features in and around Fraser Park. This map shows six locations, signified by blue stars, where photos will show San Andreas Fault features. Again, the San Andreas Fault is the red line on the map. This northwest-looking photograph, taken along Gorman Post Road, eight miles southeast of Fraser Park, shows San Andreas Fault landforms near Tahone Pass. Irregularities of the fault trace are enhanced by the oblique angle of the photo. Trees show areas where water collected or is collecting within the fault zone. These are called sag ponds. The low hill on the right side of the photo shows a Neenatch volcanic rock outcrop 
which is significant to the understanding of the fall. In 1953, geologists Tom Dibley and Mason Hill proposed a radical idea regarding the Nenach volcanic rock and the San Andreas Fault. Dibley, a preeminent California field geologist, is pictured in 1989 observing the Calaveras Fault in Hollister, California. In 1953, most scientists thought that offset along faults like the San Andreas was a few miles at most. However, Dibley and Hill noticed that in multiple places, similar rock types could be seen on either side of the fault 195 miles from each other. Could the Pacific Plate have moved that far northwest relative to the North American Plate? That would mean the lateral offset along the San Andreas Fault was 195 miles and rocks older than the San Andreas had simply been split and carried away from each other. The radical theory of Dibley and Hill is now generally accepted by geologists. The Nenach volcanic rocks of the North American Plate were divided and the correlative rocks on the Pacific Plate are called the Pinnacles Volcanics. In these two pictures, you might think that there is little similarity between the Nenach rocks and the Pinnacles rocks, but they have the same mineralogy, the same broken or brecciated texture, and formed at the same time 23 million years ago. These facts suggest that they came from the same volcano at the same time. The rocks separated an average of about three quarters of an inch per year, but separation only occurred during major earthquakes. This next feature has to do with the 1857 Fort Tejon earthquake. In several places near the San Andreas Fault, trees were damaged from shaking during that earthquake. A few of those trees still survive. One, known as the Whitener tree, exists in the small community of Pine Mountain Club, 14 miles west of Fraser Park. The tree lies along the trace of El Camino Viejo, a Spanish trail of the 18th and 19th centuries. This 400 plus year old tree, a ponderosa pine or Jeffrey pine, is next to Mill Potrero Highway. It was shaken so violently that the top of the tree broke off. You can see the break point 110 feet above the ground on the zoomed in photos. Tree ring studies confirm the date of the break, 1857, and show altered growth patterns for several years after the earthquake. The uniqueness of the Whitener tree was discovered by forest ranger Jim Whitener in 1942. This 1959 photo shows Whitener next to a sign commemorating the discovery. There is no sign or commemoration marker next to the tree today. Between the Whitener tree and Fraser Park lies Cuddy Valley. Cuddy Valley is a sag valley, a feature that occurs where the San Andreas Fault turns to the right. Ground rupture occurred within the fault zone during the 1857 earthquake. Fraser Mountain, which I'll talk about later, is in the distance to the right. Crossing Cuddy Valley Road at the west end of the valley is a tiny V-shaped linear depression. The depression is a ground rupture of the 1857 earthquake. Cuddy Valley Road can be seen as a light colored line in the distance. Where Cuddy Valley and Lockwood Valley meet three miles west of Fraser Park is a settlement called Lake of the Woods. The San Andreas Fault, thanks to the 195 mile offset previously mentioned, has different rock types on each side of the fault. At Lake of the Woods, vegetation helps emphasize these different rock types. On the left side of the photo, north of the fault, sparse desert type vegetation grows on mineral poor, rocky, granite based soil. On the right side of the photo, south of the fault, a robust cover of bushes and trees grows on a deeper soil base eroded from mineral rich schist and basalt with clays that hold water better. Admittedly, the left side hills are south facing while the right side is north facing. So sunlight intensity and direction, called slope aspect, are different. Still, geology plays a big role in vegetation differences in the Fraser Park area. 
This photo, taken from a rest area on Interstate 5, shows a view of the northeast flank of Fraser Mountain, elevation 8,017 feet. Thanks to the ongoing stress next to the San Andreas Fault, the mountain has been elevating for at least 5 million years. The mountain's broad profile, nearly flat summit, network of ringed thrust faults, steep sides, and fractured rock have led to abundant landslides. As the mountain uplifted, adjacent areas experienced significant erosion. Two terraces on the eastern side of the mountain are evidence of that. One is the Riverbank Terrace on the left side of this photo. This photo shows the highly eroded badlands topography of the Riverbank Terrace. The name Riverbank has to do with the age of the unconsolidated sediments, not how the terrace formed. The nearly flat terrace once was at the same elevation as the ground hundreds of feet below it. But erosion of Cuddy Creek lowered the land surface and a noticeable scar was created. The terrace formed 130,000 to 450,000 years ago. Road cuts of Old Highway 99 and Interstate 5 through the San Andreas Fault Zone allow multiple rock types to be seen at Tejon Pass. Pulverized by stress and strain to sand-sized grains, each earthquake dragged rocks different distances along the fault zone, not necessarily the entire 195 miles you might expect. Imagine a deck of cards spread out one-handed on a table. Not all cards move as far as the card directly under your hand. Well, rocks can be thought of as cards along the San Andreas Fault. Below overpass level is dark gray volcanic rock. Above overpass level is mostly light gray unconsolidated granite with thin swatches of orange to buff colored siltstone. Normally, these three rock types would not be near each other because they form in different geologic settings. But the star of this show is not the rocks themselves. It is the trace of the 1857 Fort Tejon earthquake. The rupture trace at Tejon Pass is marked by a few springs and slump scars now altered by highway construction. In a matter of seconds, the Pacific plate, shaded blue, moved northwest relative to the North American plate, shaded orange. This 1857 offset is now thought to be 14 feet at Tejon Pass. The next slide will zoom in to the 1857 offset in the red box. When an earthquake occurs, only a tiny fraction of the energy released is felt at the surface of the earth. Most of that energy is dissipated far below the surface, but repeated earthquakes along the San Andreas have crushed rock. Thanks to this road cut, this photo shows crushed granite and siltstone, separated by the orange scarp line. Accelerated weathering is evident from the vertical rills that drain water off the slope, though plants try to establish roots in the porous rock. Geologic processes are dynamic. In California, they continually change the landscape. When will another earthquake affect the Fraser Park area? No one knows, but Fraser Park is an interesting place to observe California's recent geologic history. Thank you for viewing this video, and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science, or visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org.